today to talk to about the Aladdin Matrix from Scuba Pro. It's a very easy to use computer that does 100% nitrox and very easy to use with the buttons. The right button is the forward button, the left button is the back button, and when you get to a function that you want to go into, you push and hold the right button. So we're going to start and just go through all the functions and I'll show you how to set this up when you first get your new Aladdin Matrix. All right, you can push either of these buttons to activate the computer. Once you activate it, you'll see the date, time, and Scuba Pro scrolling on the bottom. So we're going to go through the functions and talk about each one of them. There's several functions going to the right, but the very last function is the watch function. So we're going to set up the time and date first on this computer. So I'll hit the back button, and you'll see it says watch. If I push the right button, and hold it, it goes into the watch function. The first thing is if you want to set the alarm. If you'd like to set an alarm, you can push and hold. Right now it's set for 6.15 a.m. I do not want to get up at 6.15 a.m. So I'm going to forward it to off, push and hold, and set it for off. So now I have no alarm on this computer. Now we'll move forward and you want to set your universal time zone for where you're traveling to before you go on a trip. Right now we're in San Diego and we're at negative 7 UTC, all right? So moving forward again, we've got the time. And I believe it's 9.30 here in San Diego, but I'll show you how to set it anyways. So to change the time, you push and hold the right button again, and it flashes. You can move backwards or forwards and push and hold to set. Then you've got the minutes, so you can go forward and back, and then once again, push and hold to set. So now that I've got the time set, I'm going to move forward and see what else we have. Right here, you have a choice between 12-hour or 24-hour mode. You can push and hold, once again, and toggle between both of those. Moving on, we have the date. So I can push and hold, and I'm going to set for April, and I believe it's the 6th today. So we'll push and hold to set, and set 2017. There we go, and we'll go forward again. And if you want sounds on this computer, leave it on. If you'd like to turn off the sounds, push and hold, and toggle to off, and set. And it's going to ask you for a code. Because any time that you're making the computer less safe, uh, it wants you to know, do it, not do it by accident, but know the code to do it. So the code on this computer is 313. So we'll advance to 3, push and hold to set, advance to 1. Push and hold to set, and then once again, and set it. So now I've got a computer that's completely silent. But for the purposes of this video, I want the sound on, so I'm going to push and hold again, and turn it to on, and we'll move forward. Uh, the battery life here shows by six symbols of a battery. Right now, obviously, the battery is completely full. When you get down to about the third battery, you want to start taking a look at how to, that it might be time to change the battery before your next trip. And that's easily done on the back side of this, just with a quarter out of your pocket, open up the back, replace it with a 2450, and close it back up, and you're ready to go. Okay, so we're going to go back out of watch, and we're back at the main screen. So now we're going to continue on through all the functions of this computer using the buttons in the same fashion. All right, so the first thing we get to is Bluetooth. Now when you want to pair this to your phone, you go ahead and enter Bluetooth, and you wait. It pairs with an iOS system, or an Android system, or a Bluetooth toggle on your PC or your Mac computer. Uh, it'll come up with a number, ask you to pair it. You activate the Bluetooth on your phone or your iPad, Type in the number that the computer gives you, and you're paired. You want to get our app on the App Store, and it's named the Scuba Pro Log Truck. It's very easy to use, and it's a wonderful, uh, wonderful little app. Okay, so we're going to go forward again. And now we've got your altitude. You want to set this at a known altitude. Um, my house is at 600 feet, so I'd set it for 600, and then I know I've got my accurate altitude levels. For instance, in California, if we go up to uh, Lake Tahoe to go for a dive, the computer already knows your exact altitude, and you can set the, set the algorithm in here for 
fresh water and just go ahead for your dive because everything's going to be set perfectly for that altitude and for your current dive. All right, moving on, we've got our compass. When we are setting the compass, we've got a few things that we need to do to set this up. So we'll hit enter, push and hold, and we're in. And you can see that it uses degrees on this, this compass. Moving forward, we've got um, the declination. You want to set that for where you're at. In California, in San Diego, we're at negative 12. So I'm going to go ahead and set this for where I'm at. So I'm toggling back down, going to the negative. Get to 12. It's actually 11, 6, 4, something like that, but we're going to round it to 12. Set enter, and now my compass is set for the declination in San Diego. All right, moving forward. Um, you've got a 15 second timeout. This is a great feature because you might not want your compass on the whole time you're on a dive, so you can set it for 15 seconds, 10 seconds, or you can set it for on and off, which is how I like to do it because I just like to be in control of it more and not have it go off right in the middle of when I'm trying to do a navigation. So it's up to you how you want to set it. You already know how to use the buttons. It's very easy. Okay, moving forward. We've got uh, the calibration. So you want to calibrate your compass. So you want to set it. You're going to horizontally hold it up and spin it. Um, then you're going to want to rotate it. Go forward. And vertical. And now you're ready. It'll say ready to go. And now we've got our bearing and we're ready to go. You, and you'll see the rest of the compass information here on the bottom while you're on a dive. And I love this computer. During a dive, You've got your backlight right here, and you've got on your right button, it toggles between remaining bottom time, max depth, current depth, and your compass. So you've got all the information right there when you need it, just by hitting this button during a dive. And now we get to the dive planner. So anytime you're on a boat and you're going for a dive, and the dive master says, okay, our next dive is at 80 feet. Now, you might have already done a dive, and you have some residual nitrogen, set in and you might want to spend more time at that depth than the computer is allowing you to have because of your residual nitrogen. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go in and show you how to use this planner so that you can get the most out of all your dives that day. So here we go. All right, so it's giving, this is the depth. Anything that's flashing on a screen is what you can change with these buttons. So right now it's saying if your next dive is at 30 feet, you've got 99 plus minutes. All right, so as we go down farther, 40 minutes, 89, I mean 40 feet, 89. So let's just say we're gonna do an 80 foot dive. So we'll go down to 80 feet. It's giving me 15 minutes at 80 feet. So I know that I can go down, have a nice dive, and come on up with 15, at 15 minutes at that depth. Now if I wanna push and hold this, I can go into a decompression dive and this computer will let me know if I say I'm going to want to stay down for 20 minutes this computer will calculate that you have a two minute stop at 10 feet and it's going to take you five minutes to get to the surface. So it gives you a lot of information past just a sport diving computer. It's quite wonderful actually. So we're going to escape back out, go back through the functions and by the way you can go backwards through the functions as well to whatever however you're going to get there faster. So, um, and here's the logbook. So I push and hold and go into the logbook. Now this doesn't have any dives on it because it's a brand new computer. But if you did have dives, you just toggle up through your dives. It'll say dive one, and it has all that dive information. And if you want the second page of information in the logbook, you push and hold that button, and it goes to the rest of the information for that dive. It's quite thorough and very easy to read and use. And when you upload it through the Bluetooth to our app that's on your phone, it gives a complete dive profile and all the information you need. And you can add the name of the dive and where you were at. And uh, it's, it's got quite nice graphics as well. Okay, so we're gonna go out of that and go forward and we're back to the main screen. Um, I also wanted to mention that 
If you do dive nitrox and you go into the nitrox page, you can increase the uh, level of nitrox by hitting the forward button. And then when you go back into that, the logbook or the dive planner and you go back down to 80 feet, you can see that by simply changing your nitrox or diving nitrox at 32%, you'll be given 40 to 45 minutes of dive time as opposed to just diving on air. So you can not only plan your dive for the depth, but also plan your dive using nitrox and see which mix works better for you. And you can also see why it might be nice to take a nitrox class and get certified for nitrox to increase your bottom time and be able to use all the capabilities of this computer. That'll do it for The Matrix, and thanks for watching.